mental disorder that affects an individual's ability to move. Certain indicators include muscle stiffness, the child feels floppy when he or she is picked up, the child is unable to uphold their own body weight or their head. The child usually displays unusual postures as well. Other indicators include developmental delays in speech, sitting up, and walking. It is important to note, however, that not every child living with cerebral palsy has the same indicators or all the indicators that we just mentioned. Every child living with cerebral palsy is different. What is your name? And what school do you attend, Diane? I have cerebral palsy. Sometimes children have a mixture of different types of cerebral palsy. Take seven-year-old Diane, for example, who is diplegic, which means both of her legs are affected, and as a result, Diane would need assistance walking, walking up the climbing stairs, walking downstairs. Diane's left hand is also impaired. If you notice, she doesn't use it that much, and she keeps it closed. However, these impairments does not hold Diane back. As you can see, she's a very bright and intelligent little girl. Diane topped her grade. She won the award, the top performer award for grade K. And she's working towards winning that award again for grade one. Nam has diplegia cerebral palsy, which means that his two legs are affected. As a result, he requires regular daily physical activity or therapy to strengthen his legs and his upper body. We first started practicing standing up with Nam January 2018 and he started at 3 seconds. Nam has now progressed to standing up for 40 minutes as well as taking steps across the balcony. Nayam's disability does not hold him back. He, he has the potential to go forward. He, is, he has become extremely independent in doing things for himself. He takes great pleasure in doing things for himself. And he can do it. Always unique and totally interesting. <laughs> in exploring all strategies and avenues to motivate our students, we try to discover the learning styles and their preferences. So we use whatever their interests are to teach them. And in, in Ketura's case, we discovered that Ketura likes water. 
So therefore, the pool literally became a classroom. We tried to duplicate the same activities we perform in the classroom, at a desk, in the pool. Ketura is eight years old now, and she also has sensory processing disorder, which, which makes it very complicated because her senses are enhanced and it affects everything that she does. For instance, she doesn't like clothes on her skin, she doesn't like anything in her hands for too long, sometimes music is too much for her, and it's a lot dealing with Ketura. But in the water, Ketura is a completely different child. On a day-to-day -day basis, well, I cannot really go to work because Ketura needs lots of care and attention and time which other people might not be able to give her because she's really somebody she likes to be she's a people person I will say she's a people person she will not play with anything for too long she will not like eat on her own she don't eat on her own I have to feed her like feeding her is my is a stress it's like it's a problem because I have to literally like play with her, feed her little by little. I cannot like just take a bowl of food and feed her all. I have to like give her some, stop, let her play, come back, give her two spoons again. So it's like it's a task in itself feeding her. Brushing her teeth is another task. Combing her hair, like little things people do and won't have a problem doing it. She will, because she don't stay stable for too long. She's always on the move. She likes to move. She's very active, overactive. Since your child has started school at Donata, what progress have you seen? Well, since my child has been attending DMDC, I've seen tremendous progress. Before she came to school, the three years back, she used to hit herself. Like, hit herself so bad that her face, her skin on her face used to tear and be like a burn. Her knuckles used to burst up. Used to be all burst up. And she started hitting herself less because she's more occupied. She started hitting herself less. She started getting angry less. Because she used to do it for attention. Like, she doesn't get her way and she would just start eating herself. Anything she wanted and she don't get it, she would just start eating herself, throw herself down, eat herself, and she would give herself like, like, big lashes. Yeah, and she would just keep on doing it. Like, just looking for the attention. But since she's been at school, she's been getting the attention, she's been getting different methods of therapy to prevent her from doing it. So there have been tremendous changes in her. Her speech has improved, She's making sound, plenty sound. She's moving around, she's crawling better. She's just more happy on the whole. Happy Ketura, happy Charlene, happy, happy. which means all four of his limbs are affected, both his arms and his legs. However, that does not stop Luron from playing basketball. He loves to play basketball. When Luron first came to us two years ago, he, though he was verbal, his speech was not functional. So you would ask him questions 
and he would not be able to answer correctly. Luron is now able to give a full account of his experiences and, and movies, his favorite movies, what's going on in the, the movies. I truly think Luron has superpowers. Even though I have cerebral palsy, I love math and can solve problems. <laughs> Good job. Khalil. Khalil has opatoid movements, which is characterized by slow involuntary movements in his hands, toes, fingers. He also has a form of CP called quadriplegia, which means that both limbs are affected. Khalil has come a long way. Khalil now can communicate with us freely using the picture communication or text. Recently, we have discovered a new tool called Clicker, and he is able to use the laptop and also the another another devices to communicate. He can read stories, and he can stop by himself, continue with just a push of a button. He can also ask for something and answer simple questions. Khalil is doing us proud, and he is very intelligent. And we are hoping with this new software and new equipment that we have, that would propel Khalil to transition from the Nata school to the regular school because he's ready for it. I am unique. Every child living with cerebral palsy is precious. We, we are unique.